Well, everyone, it was a pretty crazy 24 hours. And now as the dust settles, we have to pick apart the pieces and see what is reality and what is not. And uh, I got to tell you, it's been a pretty fun ride so far. I think everybody's been uh, quite happy, even myself, almost turning to bullishness stance. But I got to tell you, there are some things we need to talk about. And the first thing, of course, is XRP, of course. We know that uh, what happened with the case yesterday. Big win. Everybody's happy. I'm happy. You're happy. Fantastic. Everybody's having a good time. So the things that we have to take a look at is just the little minutia of what is going on. So this one was uh, a piece by the block, and it does accurately depict exactly what's going on here. The SEC, as stringent and tough as they are, they took a beating yesterday. And, uh, but the thing is, is that there's a little bit more to it as far as context. So here's what we have. Ripple Labs won a, Ripple Labs won a partial victory yesterday. The decision which SEC said is still reviewing for possible appeal does not fully exonerate Ripple or its lead executives from possible civil consequences this is from Judge Torres. There's still a trial by jury for Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse and Chris Larson, or whether they're liable in illegal security sales to institutional investors who bought hundreds of millions of dollars worth of XRP. And just as a reminder, the SEC has an undefeated track record in enforcement cases brought against crypto dating back to the ICO bubble of 2017. I want to just kind of segment through this, this little piece here. And that is that uh, the SEC is mighty. And they've been bullying us for the longest time. And they've had their way because they have never lost in this arena. Well, they just took that a little beating yesterday. And it's that little crack. And the little crack is really all you need to be a winner. And when it talks about how, you know, the SEC is this juggernaut and they can't be beat. Well, we showed yesterday that it can be done. And let us not forget, not too long ago, they were suing Mark Cuban over insider trading. And instead of settling with the SEC, Mark Cuban said, you know what? I'm just going to take you guys to court and we'll figure that out because guess what? I'm a billionaire and I can do those things. And he did those things and he came out a winner. So moving forward, there are going to be some more legal nuances of what's going to happen. But always remember this, just because the SEC is mighty and some people, sometimes we have a, a natural over exuberance, just know it's not going to be a, a walk in the park but they, they are beatable. So to finish this up, Judge Torres ruled that Ripple's blind bid sales in which the company used an algorithm to sell XRP on platforms to bidders whose identity it didn't know was not a security offering, obviously, right? So when you bought your XRP, did, were you buying it from Ripple or were you buying it from the exchange or from another user? And that's the whole thing. There was an investment contract. That was the big win. However, on the flip side of that, as far as institutional buyers and hedge funds, they did know who they bought the XRP from and can reasonably expect to earn a profit from investing in a common enterprise, which is unfortunately securities law. So they'll play that out in uh, a lawsuit and see how it all works out. And then just remember this, the judge's ruling too can still be appealed to the second, second, second Circuit Court of Appeals, which multiple experts predict will happen, possibly for a trial term on whether Garlinghouse and Larson might be li liable in civil court for unlawful security sales. Appeals courts often, it states, I don't think it's true, but so appeals courts can overrule trial cut judges, judges and that experts at the investment bank do not see it as a given that the appeals, appeals court will uphold the district court's decision or reasoning. So if we take a look at that in that context, it's not just everything is just so exuberant and everything's gonna be fantastic. I believe that Ripple, towards the end, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to win everything perfectly outright. There'll probably be a little concessions. They'll probably go back and forth, maybe a little mediation. Who knows what it'll be? And then in the end, I think no one's going to come out of this like a superior, fantastic winner and not have battle scars. That's not what it's going to be. I think it's going to be a road. I think it's going to be lengthy. And I think there's still going to be some things going on. Now, I know that's different than what you may hear from other places because, uh, you know, they just think that this is the, the, the monster win and that's all they need to do. And I'm here to tell you, I don't think that's the case. Could be wrong, hope I'm wrong, but that's where we got. So now that we talked about that and we straightened it out, never forget it is a win. Let's talk about some more good news. 
because there are some good news on the horizon. And when you're, when you're battling against the government, the SEC, it's good when you have advocates for you inside the government. This is Rep. Richie Torres, and he is a New York Democrat. I put emphasis on Democrat because I know believe, people believe that only Democrats hate crypto. It's not the case. Just some wacky Democrats <laughs> hate crypto for some reason. I'm sure there's some Republicans that also hate, hate crypto for whatever reason. I don't know. They're just uninformed. But uh, Representative Richie Torres out of New York said, the SEC is acting like an overzealous traffic cop, arbitrarily ticketing drivers while keeping the speed limit a secret. <laughs> That's pretty good. It prefers to communicate by enforcement rather than by rules or guidance. It's time for investigation. It calls for an inves investigation from the House. So there is that piece, which I like to see. And then let us not forget that Representative Warren Davidson and House Majority Whip Tom Emmer from Minnesota, both Republicans, so on both sides of the aisle, they brought forth the SEC Stabilization Act. This is on June 12th. This is to fulfill the promise to restructure the SEC and remove Gary Gensler as chair of the SEC. I got to tell you, uh, I personally thought that when, when Gary came in, he would be a great asset to crypto. He had been teaching it at MIT. He looked pretty well versed in what was going on. And boy, did that turn out to not be correct. It just seems like uh, Gary's going to do what he's going to do, and he has it in his mind. But uh, thankfully, there's people in the government that want him out just as well. So let me just think about that in the comments section. And then uh, to finish up, because I want to do this pretty quickly today just to give people my thoughts, and um, the Asian markets. So we know the XRP went from, I don't know, 36 cents, 37 cents. I think it all the way ahead to 90, 89, 90 cents, somewhere around there. And I know some people will say, well, the Asian markets, and we don't need the Asian markets too much. I'm like, you're delusional. Uh, this is a piece from Coindesk. Uh, trading values of XRP tokens against the Korean won hit 2.5 billion on South Korean exchange up it in only 24 hours. 10 South Korean exchanges turned billions of dollars of XRP, which contributed to the big pump. South Korean traders are known for pushing euphoric rallies. The price of Bitcoin is sometimes at a 30% premium, which is pretty crazy. And if you ever want to look at this, just to figure it out for yourself, if you go to coingecko.com, and you click on exchanges, it'll take you to uh, this, this uh, page right here. And you can take a look, and it, uh, there's a variability of what they consider exchange number one, two, three, four, as far as trust levels and every different place. But if you go over a 24 hour volume, 24 hour volume, and you click on that, you can just see that, that Binance Coinbase Exchange normalized. Sorry. Binance up bit Bitforex. Bitforex, length number 75. And if you click on them themselves, up it, and see what was being traded, you can see that the reason why the volume was, was up so high was because of XRP, Solana, and a little bit of Bitcoin. And you can see that it's in the billions of dollars. So when people talk about the Asian markets, they're not kidding. Those are the ones that uh, I think have really pushed, pushed crypto up uh, to I mean, a magnificent amount. And I'm actually looking forward to this next crypto bull run, which I'm thinking 2024, maybe 2025, because it looks like there's different countries, including maybe even China, that is a little bit more positive towards crypto. Anyhow, let me just think. And then lastly, uh, just to talk about this, because I know everybody's talking about XRP yesterday. Don't forget there's this little ETF that could potentially come through. I personally don't think it's going to actually happen, but it doesn't matter because you've got the CEO and the founder of one of the, excuse me, the largest institution out there with nine trillion assets under management, Larry Fink, BlackRock chairman and CEO. And he is essentially being the chief marketing officer. This was him just yesterday as everything was going off. I don't think every, you know, people didn't talk about it too much. He's already said you know, uh, some different things about uh, Bitcoin, but take a listen to this and just how, uh, I mean, really, he's doing the work for us. Let me make sure. Take a listen.
more and more our global investors are asking us about the role of crypto. And as I said, I do believe a lot of crypto is is going to be it's an international asset. It's going it is um, it has a differentiating value versus other asset classes. But more importantly, because it's so international, it's going to transcend any one currency and currency valuation. If you just look at the value of of our dollar, how it de depreciated last two two months, and how much it appreciated over the last five years, I mean. A international crypto product can really transcend that. And that's why we believe there's great opportunities. And that's why we're seeing more and more interest. And that interest is broad based worldwide. More and more our global investors are. Yeah, he's not lying. Broad based worldwide. So I gotta I gotta tip my hat to to Larry there. Thank you for essentially being a great marketing piece for crypto as that comes through. Now, again, if the ETF happens or doesn't happen, doesn't really matter. It just, it, it, it goes to validate uh, what crypto actually is, that it's here to stay. And there's a gentleman here who um, is, again, the largest <laughs> as far as asset manager. And when he talks about there is global demand, he's not kidding. And uh, another story that went under the radar is that this, Europe's first Europe's first spot Bitcoin ETF has been approved and going to launch this month. This is going to be in Amsterdam. It's uh, listed as Bcoin. Uh, Jacoby Asset Manager postponed a 2020 launch because of Terra Luna and FTX collapse. I got to tell you, that's pretty good timing. And the firm said is now on track to launch later in July as demand has shifted. It could be maybe because of something like this, maybe because of that nice little ripple win. Maybe it's because of uh, ARK Investment and Fidelity coming out with uh, also applying for a Bitcoin ETF. Whatever it is, that's good news. And again, I think things are just lining up for a pretty massive bull run coming up later on. I don't, I don't think it's going to happen uh, in the next month or so, but uh, hey, I've been wrong before. And then lastly, just to give you a little more dose of uh, reality, which I know people hate sometimes. Ben, Ben, a pretty good quote. And uh, he said this last cycle, <laughs> when Bitcoin dominance went to 52%, it had a rapid pullback to 49 to 50, causing many to YOLO into altcoins once again. Five weeks later, dominance was at 62%. Oof. Ben is not, uh, first of all, Ben likes altcoins, just doesn't like them right now. So take it with a grain of salt and uh, just uh, plan accordingly in your investments, not financial advice, not your daddy, do whatever you wanna do. And then lastly, I just wanna give a shout out to World Mobile. Uh, they came out and they secured licensed spectrum in the US of A. And what that means is that they secured up to 20 megahertz of spectrum in markets within California, New Mexico, Nevada, and Utah, which kind of sucks, they're not in Texas, but whatever. Those are states that are suffering from widespread under connectivity, especially in rural regions. And I don't know if you know this, but 10% of America is unconnected. Yeah, I know. Pretty crazy, right? I mean, it's not all sunshine and fantastic unicorns here in America. We've got our problems. This spectrum will enable the de deployment of decentralized network infrastructures as air nodes. Secured licensing spectrum will allow World Mobile to become a full member of the G GSMA to be officially recognized as the 52nd mobile network operator in the USA, pending approval by the FCC. So hats off to World Mobile. Again, pay attention to the projects that are building in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. And lastly, because of everybody buying and selling XRP, just know that there was a lot of different problems with different exchanges. And there was a, there was a little bit of a, a heating up issue and of Coinbase as they relisted and they had some slowdowns. Also, I trust capital app uh, wasn't working. So uh, sorry about that. Looks like uh, everybody's buying and selling too much, but hey, that's a good thing. And if you got a problem with the uh, I trust capital app, refresh or use a desktop. And uh, that's what I did for XRP. And that's it for today. So look, I just want to keep this nice and short and sweet. Just tell people what's going on. But that is it for today. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Uh, things are going to move pretty hot and heavy pretty, pretty soon. So uh, try to get your news from someone you like. Uh, maybe it's me, maybe it's somebody else. But just keep up to date because things are going to move pretty quickly. But that is it for today. So thanks much for stopping by. I appreciate it. If you want to stick around, I'm going to answer some questions the best of my abilities for the next uh, 15, 20 minutes. Then we'll get out of here and enjoy the weekend. But thanks so much. I'll see you guys on the next one.